Gamma Delta T cells are really a unique form of immune cell. If we go back in vertebrate evolution, we find it's been present in animals for hundreds of millions of years, and that normally implies it's extremely important. It lives in your skin, it lives in your colon, for example. And what it does most of your life is it crawls around and checks on your other cells if they're happy and healthy. Gamma Delta T cells that I have would work just as well in you as they do in me. That's not true for conventional T cells that we ordinarily use to fight cancer and to think about the way that the immune system is attacking cancer. They can actually recognise, for example, cancerous cells or precancerous cells and signal to the rest of the immune system that there's something wrong there and also directly attack and eliminate those tumour cells. What we developed in the lab together with Rick and Adrian is a method where we keep the skin structure integer and we put little pieces of skin onto a three-dimensional carbon grid. It's literally a grid. And that keeps the orientation of the skin in place. And we can then literally culture a living piece of skin for several weeks. And what happens is, similar to when you get wounded and you have a, a scar building, this skin starts to wound heal, or at least it tries to do that. So we have a lot of fibroblast outgrowth. It's literally scarring. But whilst this process happens, these cells produce a lot of alarmins and growth factors for the immune system. And these factors cause the immune system that is trapped within a little piece of tissue to actually crawl out. And because the pores of the grid are bigger than the immune cells, as soon as they reach the interface between the skin and this carbon grid, they just fall through the pores into a culture vessel. And at the end of the process, we just wash them out. When Adrian and Oliver found uh, the way to isolate and expand the gamma delta T cell, that has been the foundation to start a company with the objective to transform the possibility to isolate the cell in a product, a product that can become a medicine later on. The challenges that we need to overcome uh, to bring this uh, product to patients uh, is the challenge that you have in all the cell therapy products is the manufacture of these cells. It's a living product, very different from a small molecule or an antibody. When you make a cell therapy, what you do is actually to be able to cultivate a large number of very healthy cells um, and then those are directly infused into the patient. And the complexity is enormous because you need to have cell that needs to be frozen and then needs to be thawed and then they need to become available to be given to patient. At Adaptate we're looking at things slightly differently. What we do is instead of using cells as the medicine, we develop antibodies as the medicine. An antibody is a protein which is able to recognise the cells and actually bring about a change when it interacts with those cells, in our case increasing its activity. And so what we'll be doing is administering the antibodies to the patients and then the antibodies will be able to interact with the cells, patients' own cells that are there in their tumours to bring about the anti-tumour response. I think the great advantage if this treatment were to prove successful is that they should be able to access it uh, from banks of cells in depots or repositories that can be called upon as needed. That is very different from the current approaches whereby the patient's own T cells are drawn from the blood and are grown up and then reinfused. The latter has the advantage that it's your own cells and you know they're going to work for you and you know they're going to be okay. But it's tough. It's tough taking cells from someone who's pretty ill to begin with and expecting those cells to, to work well. It, it, it's somewhat invasive. If we could have banks of healthy cells ready to deploy, I think that would be a big advantage. It might even mean it would be possible to do some of these things in uh, decentralized banks, just like people go for dialysis.